Hello everybody and welcome to Basing Techniques. This is episode 6. We're going to do another unit basing thing. This is going to be with the Cave Dweller Savages from Song of Ice and Fire. You can see we've already hacked most of them off of their bases. We'll explain the reason for that. Those of you that have seen some of these before, you know why. Because what we want to do is take some of these plates here from Green Stealth World. You got basically skeleton piles, skull piles. I know I'm using this for my neutrals over here, the basically corpse and weapon piles over here. More skulls from Green Stuff World. And what we want to do is have a unit that's more like this. So what we're going to do is get some things out of the way here so you can see unit of spear wives. You can see we've got our skull piles here. There's also some tree branches, some cork, a few different things to essentially make this a little bit of a rougher terrain. Now, once the unit's painted and we add our blood and snow effects and with the cave door sandwiches, I think there's going to be probably a lot of the blood effects. You get something that's going to look like this unit of readers right here. You can see the blood effects that mix with the snow. See right over here pile of skeletons, skull piles here, so we'll take out one of our raiders, and you can see that. So the snow and the blood effects work their way around, see we got the blood effects on the weapons. Now I've got some previous episodes, some YouTube lives that I've done, but I also do this as part of my army painting pledge level, and that's on the Patreon page. That's going to be scrolling across the screen. So we use a few grass tufts, the secret weapon, crushed glass, snow, and then plenty of these nifty skull piles here. But that does mean that we have to slice these guys off of the bases. So here's another look at the skeleton pile. Yeah, these are from Green Stuff World, and they're called Crunch Times. I've got some examples, actually. You can see the, the Raiders, this unit that you just saw me flash in front of you there. Now there's our green stuff world. See all those nifty skulls right in there. So many different types of plates that you can use. So I think there's a, there's a steampunk one, there's a more of a sci-fi one. Lots of nifty. Look at that. Really fun. But they're they're not totally let's see, repetitive everywhere. There's a little bit of variation there, which is really nice. Actually, I think I'm going to go to my, this is my blog post. Yeah, so you can get a little better view of what the finish effect looks like. Now those guys, those are actually painted with oil paint. See all the variation there on the greens and the browns and the tans? It's just a little bit easier to do with the oil paints. So what I'll be doing is more tutorials painting all these free folk here just like this mostly with the oils. I'm going to basically each unit I'm going to tackle with a different paint. Some with GW paint, some with maybe even creature caster paints. Just because not everybody has the stuff that I have. So I figure if I kind of go to you guys that might make things a little bit easier for you. Now what I'll show you here is I just call these jewelers blocks. You can get these hard rubber blocks on Amazon maybe five bucks. But see all these slice marks right here? And I'm gonna set this up here. Hopefully that's gonna be within reasonable focus. And what we'll do is we'll grab oh one of these guys that's still on a base here. So we'll eh yeah we'll do this guy right here. So he's still attached at the base. Razor saws make this whole process easier faster and safer. What are we going to do? We're going to pop this thing down. Going to make sure the focus is in the right place here. That's better. And you can see here my hand is up here. And just no matter what the saw does, not going to slice my hand. Now I'm going to have to do this a little bit gently because the table is going to shake. That means the camera is going to shake. But I think you can see what's happening here. It's just cutting through slowly. We're almost through one foot. There's one. Now the second one's going to take a little more because it's 
here. And I do suggest going slow like this, not trying to do it all at once or cutting back and forth real fast. So he is now separated from the base. There's a few kinds of these razor saws. I would, Exacto makes probably the most common one to find, but there are others. You can also go to my blog, which is, see it's scrolling right across the bottom of the screen, that's wapeliasblogspot.com. That talks about some of the materials too. It gives you, these are more pictorial type articles. So I've shaved away all the excess stuff. All I need now is a pin vise. And once again, this is where our block is our friend. Because I'm going to hold this thing down here. And now I'm going to take my pin vise. And we'll drill into that foot. But you can see I'm not doing this. As soon as I start doing this, things start flexing back and forth. I've had drill bits break. And that can be an expensive and painful process when that happens. So from there, what we would need then is one of these little paper clips. And I usually find a size that matches a drill bit and get as many paper clips as I can because matching those two things can be tricky. So there we go. We've got him on a pin. And you can see all of these guys right here. Well, they're all glued into their pins or glued in on their bases there, so they're all good to go. And as I said, I've already chopped off a bunch of these from their bases. You say, well, why, why are you doing that? Well, it lets us do a few things. So here's that alternate sculpt spear wife. You can see I've got her on a nice big old piece of cork, a fancy base can't do that when she's sitting right on top of the plastic base. You have to make a choice and I would say when you're doing yours maybe half. Cut half of them off the base, leave the rest on there. I don't think there's any units where I've cut them all off the bases. There's a few that have been close, some more than others, but that the spear wave unit, when I will get to I think towards it we'll do a little bit of the magnetization process. It's simple. There's nothing super complicated about it. It's just magnet, bang. It means I can port the, transport these things around real easy, no problem. Now I do usually number these. It's more so in the early part of the process because I've sort of strategically placed these because you get the three poses, four of each, yeah, four of each, three different poses, and then sometimes, usually a champion, leader, this is the cave dweller, dweller alpha right here. So what we do is, we just kind of position these around. Usually the guys in the back get raised up a little bit more, the guys in the front, not so much. Eh, it just it kind of is neat for photographing and such. Painting process will be interesting on these guys too, but what we need to do now so we need to show you how we're going to break this stuff up. We'll talk about our cork over here. And this is really inexpensive stuff. You can get it at Office Max, Michaels. I just got it on Amazon. Many square feet of it for $10. And you'll see how nifty this stuff is to use. So what we'll do is we'll get our materials out on the, like this our oxide paste here and our glues get that all out set up and we're going to start basing our guys so as we get set to put those figures on the bases that we just chopped off we're going to set up a few things one of the things we're going to do is get our red oxide paste out here this is from Vallejo I think there's 12 different kinds of this stuff there's sandy paste there's uh, brown earth. There's got to be a, a dozen of these. So I'm just going to put some of this out here. And what you'll notice, it's, I don't want to say it's sand and glue. It's a little more than that because you can see how much shape that has. That's why it works a little bit better than just glue on its own. Now we are going to be using some glue and I only put out a, a little bit at a time because it doesn't have a infinite lifespan. We'll put it that way. 
This is not Elmer's glue. This is actually tight bond wood glue. I just got it in a smaller container because it makes it a whole bunch easier to deal with. We've also got ourselves a few different kinds of gravel here. So this is my heaviest heavy rocks there. This is a fine sand. It's more of a coarse sand. This is sort of a mid-range rocks. We're going to use all of these. We don't have to go too nuts with it because remember there's going to be snow also. Now when you've got a figure, here I'll get this guy situated right here. You got a figure like this, has a relatively wide footprint. A couple of things you could do, you could set him on the cork, but that's going to make him a little bit on the taller side. Maybe we want him to be a little, just as close to level with the base as we can. Usually on the front row, that's what I try to do. So, we start to look at our pieces of skull basing right here. Now I've got a couple of things. I've got a snips here that I can use to snip some of this stuff away as we try and essentially just round this thing out. Let's see how close we are to our base. That it's reasonably close to the size of the base. Maybe we do cut off a little bit more. Maybe we so we'll cut off this. But we can save that one skull piece. I'm gonna put that back over there. I might even snip this one off right here. So you can you can see that it's it gets thinner as you, as you move down. So there's another skull. We can save that for a few different spots. Now, see as we throw this out, that fits on the base a little nicer. We could maybe even cut off one more like so. We don't necessarily want to have too much overhang here. Now we don't have any overhang. Okay, that's fantastic, but we got to see is he actually going to sit on this base where we want him to potentially where could that be his back foot goes over here and get something to point with his back foot could go here and his front foot can go here so let's just glue that in I'm gonna use super glue a good portion of the time just because it works fast just because it gives me a nice quick working time there and now we have to figure out, okay, where do I drill this hole? It's going to be right around there. Now my hand might block the screen. I'll try not to. So what I'm going to do is move this over here. Go like this. There we go. And Normally I'd like to leave that sit for at least a few minutes first. Here's another thing that I can do. I can even carve away and this is where the jeweler's block comes in handy because see what happens knife goes down in the jeweler's block I'm just gonna cut some of that away so I don't have to worry about slicing up my hand at all knife's not going towards me it's going away from me it's going down into the jeweler's block and now I'm gonna drill a hole in here And now the drill just goes down, like I said, into the jeweler's block. Let's sit him down here. And there you go. So let's get a little bit of our oxide paste working here. Because we've got a got a gap right there. We got a few gaps. Out comes our oxide paste. Take a little bit of that. do is fill this right there. Fill that up right there. And then when we set his foot down, like so. Yeah, I'm going to actually snip off a little more of that pin. Spin this around. Let's get a little bit of glue on there. Like that. One foot there, other foot back here. 
I um, might take a little while for this to dry, so we're just going to set him aside. Just going to leave this aside. Now this other area around the outside, well, we're also going to do a similar thing like we did on the front section. Move this back over here. We're going to use this to fill in those gaps. You could use the glue and the gravel and that sort of thing. One thing I learned the hard way though is the glue tends to seek its level which means it just sort of collapses and that's a little less helpful. We need something like this that's going to hold its shape the very first time you slap it onto the base. So we're doing that. Again, that's what it's going to do is see we've got a flat nasty edge over here. It looks a little too, shall we say, store-bought or it looks like it just been freshly cut. We could also hide this with the snow effects too, but those are translucent. They have an, a lot of body to them, but I just said they, they're kind of on the transparent side, so it might show that gap right there. So we're just going all the way around, and now we've covered that up. I could throw some sand and gravel into this too. Maybe there's a couple of rocks. Now usually sometimes I have a tweezers for this. Now I'll just go so I'm going to throw a couple of rocks in there. There's another one there. Then I'm going to take some of this. This is that coarse sand. I'm going to just drop it in a few places. You start with the bigger stuff first then work your way down because if you start with the smaller stuff first it basically covers all your glue which means you gotta throw more glue down to put the next layer of stuff in and that it just starts looking weird if that didn't take me long to learn that lesson so I know it's kind of a kaleidoscope of colors but now he's look like he's standing on a pile of bones and skulls let's do another one here now what I am gonna do is you can see I'm pointing over here at the unit here let's move this a little bit forward so you can see it as I move away from this some of them are going to have cork some of them are even going to have a lower or shorter style cork like this it's about half as tall as the other stuff and that's what happens it just sort of migrates across and I'll do this with the spear wives here real quick so you can see we've got mostly skulls up here in the front and as it gets towards the back over here that's that heavier thicker cork and over here on this side it's the thinner narrower cork just it's a way to mesh the base bases of the figures and the movement tray together now we're gonna look for do we look for some more skulls. Okay, let, let's do some skulls again. These things tend to have natural fracture points. Sometimes you just do this. You just sort of flex it and you see where a natural fracture point is. Okay, there we go. See how thin that is right there? So there's there's one. That is prob that's going to be sort of on the large size. Now if there was the spear wives had a lot of running poses where they're up on one leg this is a little bit different so yeah I think maybe we'll go with a little less of the covering the whole base and now I gotta position this here where can I position this oh look he could essentially be straddling that so I'm gonna make sure this is it's flat let's glue that down Another thing you can sometimes do to accelerate the drying process, if you put a little touch of one dot of wood glue there, it sort of interacts with your super glue a bit. And then what we'll have to do is get ourselves a hole drilled right about actually go this way with it. Yeah, if I can get a hole drilled right around there, 
I should be good. So sorry for the hand in the way. Here, let's just move this down there so you don't have to look at a big old ugly hand. Now let's see if we can position him out, and there we go. So see, it just does straddle that. Now here's the thing, you've got this I had originally intended to raise him up a little bit because he's got this club that's now I had hoped originally to have that club sort of raised above the baseline because it would let me do some more things with the snow and, and everything else but we've got other ones so we can still do that at a certain point what we'll do is we'll leave that aside because we got some wet super glue there we're going to skip the one that's not on the, or already still on the base. Now we got something that's got a really, really, really wide stance. Maybe that will work. So let's just snip some of this stuff away here. And you can see I'm, I'm looking for a natural place to do that. And I'm saving all of these little pieces. I'm saving every single one that I'm chip, chipping off here. Now I've got a magnifier light in between me and the flying debris, in case you were wondering. Now here is something, this is something interesting we can do. We can, something like this where his foot is going to sit here, and then his back foot is going to be a little bit lower, so he's going to be somewhat raised. I have to look and see, that looks pretty pretty level right there and throw down some super glue we will just a touch of our wood glue there because it's almost whenever you add I found this out the hard way too whenever you add water to super glue it tends to cure it faster uh, I think there actually is something called insta cure or whatever that in a way does the same thing now while that dries a little bit I'm gonna go back to this guy and we're gonna do the same thing with our oxide paste now that he's had it's just a chance to dry all this is gonna do is get rid of that very sudden edge. Look, we got this big old triangle right there. Well, if we take some of this, now that triangle is essentially hidden behind all this texture. And with this one, I'm not even going to bother doing the whole rocks and gravel thing. It's there's so it's so minimal right here. How much of this texture paste is being used? I don't think I really need to worry about masking it, hiding it. And right there, where I've got my little cut mark, it's the last thing I've got to hide. And that's the end of that. Goes back in the base. This has now had a little chance to dry, and I need to drill a hole right about there. So I'm going to get this, once again, out of the way, so you don't have to look at the back of my hairy hand. I'm just going to drill a little bit here. Let's see how he works. So there's our hole. And I can see that I've got to chip away at that skull. So I've got just this basic wood carving tool here, nothing fancy. See, I'm just going to let the downward force go into down into that I'm just going to call it a jeweler's block sorry I know there's some other name for it but I'm going to just call it a jeweler's block now I also and this you have to do sometimes when you're doing this angled pose I'm going to angle my pin so now the pin is at an angle now all I need to do is just I need to snip off a little bit more of this. So 
Again, doing this, orientating it so that it's pointed away from my hand. Fit it in there again. And now that's it. So he sits in there good enough. And his back foot will make contact. Now it's time to glue this in. And then we'll deal with some oxide paste along the outer edge. Like so. All right. We're also going to let him let that super glue dry a little bit. This is one. It's got that. His weapon is I'm practically touching the ground, but he's a little bit further back. So now I feel okay about raising this up a level. So there's a couple things I can do. Here, let's grab some of this cork. Let's just start playing with this right away. What I love about this, see how unevenly that breaks? And look at how just this natural kind of sloped rock texture. And the nifty thing is, I'll just take a little piece of this out here. So you can see that even makes just nifty big boulders by itself. Because I see people buying, well, I see people, I tried doing it myself, finding essentially rocks for miniatures. I'd be darned for those things. They were, they were not cheap. Not cheap whatsoever. So I'm going to do, I'm going to see what happens. I can see what I did. I just, I pulled away some of that. It's maybe half the height it was. Eh maybe a little more than half the height and I'm gonna see if he if he fits on here and he sort of does so now he's raised up see how that raises him up a little bit let's see if we can't find a nice little skeleton for him to be sitting on top of so once again we're gonna snip through this like that and see if there's ah so look at that both things fit on there I am gonna have to snip away some of this front part of the texture here now I can see that that's how raised that is well we got our carving tools maybe before we even set that down what I can do is I don't want to lose my rocks there. See that? I'm just carving that away like we did to get that one guy's foot to stick down in there. We also have half a skull here. That's looking a little weird. I'm going to carve that away, but we are going to save it because you never know when you can use half a skull. And now what we'll do is get these two these two items attached here to our base a little super glue you don't want to put too much you put too much when you press these things down everything is going to squeeze out the other side like I said anything I tell you where it's well you might want to think about doing this it's because it was a hard lesson that I learned and I I put too much oxide paste or too much glue or too much whatever and you better believe that I ended up with a big freaking mess didn't make me happy whatsoever so now we've got him we can stick him down here with his pin let's give him some glue here And there he is. We're going to let him dry because we want to get oxide paste around this edge. What I'm going to do, since I'm not doing, I'm going to see if I can't zoom this in just a smidge for you here. Going to get back to my oxide paste. I always have a little container of water off to the side because it will dry out in the brush. 
we're going to do is fill in fill in these gaps here now the you can let the wood glue and this mix together again they they don't fight each other too much but see that stringiness there that's actually the super glue that's getting into the oxide paste and they kind of interact in a weird way normally like I said this has a whole lot more time to sit and dry I had to kind of push the pace here I always do with these basing tutorials because I, I want you to see the whole process but I also don't want it to be a six hour long video so that basically hides our edge now let's say we want some kind of texture there I'm not going to necessarily use the biggest gravel but I am going to use some of the not so heavy gravel a little bit of that now we will go with some of the rough sand a little more of the rough sand and then we'll finish it off with our fine sand I know it looks like snow so we've got that integrated pretty well we got another one here that's off the base this one is also a little bit further back but I still don't want to raise him up too much so we're gonna see if we can't do the same thing where we tear some of this away it also makes it a more uneven surface as opposed to this one right here where you can see how flat that is looks like a little bit of a cliff that's that's the one thing that cork can look like so that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna throw this here he's another one with that weapon it's kind of pointed down. And I gotta make sure I orientate this in such a way. There we go. So I see now the weapon is suspended again. Let's glue this down. Get a little bit of glue in there. We're gonna get a little bit of our wood glue in drop that down now let's see if we can't reposition him where he was there we go we'll glue him in place remember those skull chunks of skull that we had that we took away from some of the other pieces so we got stuff like this maybe that could fit in there we got stuff like this skull right here I'm going to see if I can't fit that in there. And in this case, I'm just going to go ahead with some wood glue. And we'll position this extra little bit of skull here. I'm going to say right here like that so all of these little bits and pieces you think oh man you know, I can't use that well you'd be surprised how many places you can throw something like that so let's just finish this off here with some of our sands and gravels I'm gonna do a little bit more with my regular wood glue here I also have to keep in mind there is going to be going to be snow on this base, so we'll just get that, get some glue around here, get ourselves a couple of rocks. Like I said, you want to use tweezers or something? That's fine. I've had a tweezers over here. I think it ended up. Uh, and some of my other work gear 
So now he goes bang into the movement tray. And we'll do one more over here. Now this one, oh look, it's another one like so. Remember what I talked about I didn't want to raise these guys up too high. Well this one, he could really, he could use that. That wouldn't be a, the worst thing in the world to give him a little bit of height. So I'm going to look for an interesting... Ah, see that's what I'm looking for. See a little bit of overhang right there? That's the kind of thing that I am looking... Oh yeah, that's the kind of thing I'm looking for. See that, that overhang like that? Because what that means is, yeah, there's an overhang, but it's also not interfering with the other figures because it's got a lower profile there. Or we could go the other way and go like this. But what I want to do is, you know, take some of that away. I'm going to sit this here. Get him down on that. Yeah, look at that. Now you can see. Even without him gluing on, look at how much higher that weapon is. Let's grab one of our first ones. Look at that. So it's just, it's touching the base. And that's with him actually slightly raised. So it's time to, time to get him down on the base. But this time we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to start with some of that oxide paste. We're going to concentrate where we know there's a gap <clears throat> because this part's not getting covered by that by the cork. So I put that there just a touch of super glue. Let's see if we can't get ourselves a little bit of wood glue there. Then we'll glue this. in place like so and what we can what we can do now we can have another one of those little skull pieces down in here but see what I'm doing look at this taking that oxide paste that was sort of piled up there and I'm pushing it up the up the slope a little bit so there's a little bit of gap back there we're gonna I'm gonna fill this gap in that's all it takes it doesn't have to be doesn't have to be super elaborate. So here's a piece of skull or something. We'll just drop that in there. And then we'll go around with our oxide paste like we did before. Looking for any gaps. And I can also do the same thing. I can find a few of these rocks to put in place. The oxide paste doesn't have as much hold as super glue. I'll tell you that right now. Potentially some of these things pop off as you paint it, whatever. It's not a big deal. It's not going to kill you. If you're worried about that, well, then you throw down some of the wood glue and that'll certainly hold it in place. There's a few different types of that tight bond wood glue. I there's the one that dries a little bit faster. There's one that takes maybe a little longer to dry, but it's a stronger hold overall. So I'm gonna just sorry again for my hand there. Just working a hole there. And now like so get him in there now we can put snow on here too or I'm gonna take a little touch of my wood glue here a little touch of wood glue and some of these extra pieces like like this I think you can see that I'm going to just throw that in there. So now we're getting rid of a little bit of that plateau. There. We could also have some trees on this. Why do I have the trees hanging off the bases? Because 
give me something to put the icicles on. I think if you've seen some of my past posts, you know that I've been able to use that Liquitex heavy gloss gel to make some pretty nifty icicles. So we could do something like this and have this sticking off the base, just hanging off like this. But we're going to keep this a little bit simple here. So what I might do is just one more See if we can do one more base. So we got this guy here, and we'll put him next to this one. Now he needs to be raised up a little bit. Actually, I already like that piece. I'm going to shove that onto the tray already. So I got myself another, another chunk of the Oh, look at that. That's looking pretty neat. Now it also has to match the, the footprint there. It has to be wide enough to hold him, and that that is. So we can do our thing with the oxide paste. So we're going to... We're not covering up the entire base because if we do it we're not giving the super glue really any place to hang on to so we'll do that give it a shot of super glue here like that drop that down and just like we did on the other one I'm gonna push that up also going to maybe give it a touch of wood glue there because I want to have even more of a somewhat of a rock slide here so I, like I did before start with the biggest rocks work in the next gradient and the next gradient and then this but if you're just gonna say ah you know what forget all that I'm just gonna use I'll just use snow I'll have big old blobs of snow sitting there well nothing wrong with that this is something that I discuss in the army painting videos every single time in every single episode I actually will have a bit of a stopwatch going and I'll keep track of how long a given effect takes. I'll say, well, okay, that, that took 10 minutes or 5 minutes. 5 minutes doesn't sound bad, but now what's 5 times 13 because of the cave tool alpha? That's a whole extra hour there, potentially, maybe more if the effect takes you longer. Do you want to spend that extra time, that extra hour or two hours on just one unit? If it's free folk and they're just raiders, well, maybe you don't want to spend that much time on a unit that is actually worth zero points. Again, it's it's all up to you what it is, what are what's your needs, what are you looking to accomplish? My dad, I can't, I can't make that kind of decision for you. That's your decision to make. I just have to find out where my... There it is. <laughs> Hopefully I can find that again. The cork will sort of self-heal and, and close up a little bit on itself. But I think I've got it in the right space. So I'm sort of leaning down over that little rock, rock fall there. So we'll get him on the movement tray. And the next thing we'll do, we're going to tackle these guys here, like the alpha. See, that's the other thing I'm trying to mimic, is that rock texture right there, which I'm not sawing this off of there. That just doesn't make any sense. So what we're going to do is try and now base these guys that are still attached before we get onto the movement tray as a whole. So we'll be right back with that. Now we've got to base our guys that are still attached to the bases and I've got one two three four five of those 
Now the Cave Dweller Alpha, he's obviously taken up as much space as pretty much everything else, but I just want to show you real quick. I'm going to get some of my cork here and break off a few pieces and just show you how closely that can mimic the texture that's already there. So if you're wondering why I really especially wanted to use this type of cork, that's why. Now we also have our little separate skulls that we're going to use. So I cut a few of these. Just use a razor saw, sliced a few of those off. We've got our oxide paste, like you do. Get rid of some of the excess here. Just like we used it on the bases with the cork and, and everything else, we're going to pile some of this here. And now we just take up some of that space. There is, I know GW makes it, well, gosh, who doesn't make a crackle medium? Basically everybody does. You know, Green Stuff World has one or two. I've used the GW stuff, and that works pretty well. However, that is almost more of a desert kind of thing, more of an arid, whatever, where you might want more of a wasteland type. So this is going to be covered in snow. I'm going to say, nah, it, maybe it doesn't really get time to dry out like that. So I'm not going to do the, that cracked earth type. We'll maybe do it on something else. So I can put in a few dots of super glue or I'm actually going to get some wood glue just out over here next to where my little touch of that. Now if you have a smaller brush or whatever, a different brush, let's see if I've got me a smaller one here. Well, I just got a I've got a different one. We'll use this. So just the same number eight round craft brushes that you see in all of the demos that I do. The, even the oil painting ones. It's all the it's all the same brush. You can see that this one's been kind of abused. Now you know why I use it for glue. You want to get the glue out of there. Actually, just use rubbing alcohol. That'll that'll pretty much take care of it. So let's get ourselves some skulls on here. Now I do actually have some tweezers so I can drop that skull down in there. Like I said I could use super glue too but the I found that the wood glue is strong enough to hold them. It's not like you're actually gonna be pulling on those at all. So you got a couple of skulls in there. I'm gonna go with two. I don't need to go crazy with that. Now we can try and find some rocks and try and position those in here like so. Find a smaller one maybe to throw in here. And then we'll go in with our with this type of somewhat heavier rocks go two nuts with it. If one goes where I don't like it, I can just move that away. Now I've got my somewhat rougher gravel. It's not just a matter of convenience, but you notice how these all sort of telescope each of these little containers. One fits into the next. Well, it's one way for me to know how much I've got. But see, I can just I can work my way up each gradation. Cave dweller is all set. We got this guy here. Now as we look at our movement tray over here, skull, skull, skull need to get some kind of skulls onto this base. Now, is it this type? Is it this type? I'm going to do, just for the heck of it, I'm going to see what happens when I just break this right here. Now, almost, but doesn't quite fit. Even though he's got a wide stance, still doesn't fit underneath there, but 
it can go let's say somewhere like that because remember we gotta we gotta fill in that gap too that's that whole part of making things mesh together let's I think we're more likely to have some of these skull pieces fit in there let's see if we can even go something like that doesn't have to be incredibly complicated let's go with some oxide paste this is that we're also filling the gaps when you're, when they're on the bases like this it's kind of easier to just throw the oxide paste down first and then throw the piece down on the when you're working with the movement tray it's almost a little bit easier the other way around sometimes to just put the piece down there glue it where it's supposed to go and then stick your piece on there yeah I know that sounds weird but no big deal all right let's now I was tempted to use that but I, what I will do is now we're gonna mix the two together so you can see we use the separate skull right there to try and make this more of a more of a hole I'm gonna go back to some wood glue here so I can get some of my sand and gravel glued in place always have a couple of brushes on hand for doing this sort of thing like that once again another gap to fill over here fills that in pretty well when all this dries then it becomes pretty solid I've already traveled I don't want to say far and wide but these things have seen a lot of road work my finished ones so far and I know that they hold together pretty darn well here we're just getting ourselves some some rocks and gravel out there starting off with the big stuff that sort of sort of why would you want to call it uh, it's almost like little pieces of shale there it's sort of matched my other textures so if you're wondering why I started with that so there's that coarse sand and then the fine sand and now we've got ourselves it just he looks like he's really got something going on there and he starts to I'm just get these things out of the way so I can lift this up and you can see it see we got we're starting to blend these guys together and then as we work back here we're gonna have more of the cork back there now we've got another one of these guys right here I think he's pretty much the same pose what I'm gonna do let's say we don't want to do the the skull stuff what I do have got some of these I got some rocks right here that I could use so I'm gonna do is actually cut that down a little bit and bang exactly what we did with the skulls there that little skull plate well we're doing it with, with our cork and when you're talking about conservation of funds or being cheap I and hey whatever <laughs> I can admit to that that little tiny chunk of cork is going to cost you a whole bunch less than yet another piece of your crunch time plate so we talk about the currency of time and then the currency of well currency and sometimes you just have to consider that so I'll get that get that in place here there we go just want to get that glue off of my tweezers otherwise the 
Well, tweezers aren't going to tweeze very much. Who knew that that was a verb? Doing the same thing. Just dropping in. Bigger rocks here. Now, next level. And I know on the other ones I have just taken the shortcut of not bothering with all of this secondary gravel and sand and just say, you know what, I'm just going to cover it up with snow. But maybe that's another thing to consider is it takes time to do the snow. And snow and the, the snow stuff, pretty much any snow, is going to cost more than some sand and gravel. So there was yeah, another level of consideration to make. This one, I think I still want to have some kind of skull stuff going on. So I need to... Mm, this piece, I'll just show you something real quick. Something like this. What am I going to save that for potentially? Corners like that? Or interior spaces like that? So let's snip off another piece and sometimes you just gotta just gotta break it and you get some oh, look at this there's just a skull hanging right there that's pretty wild all right so I just did that I'll tell you what that's also looking like a, a good thing to put there so sometimes you say oh this will be perfect here then you say oh but wait it could also go over here And then you might just say, the heck with it, I'm just going to put some some rocks there. All right, so what I've got is this. I'm going to snip off this skull right here and throw that in my skull depository. And so it's going to go this way more. It's going to go on the, on the back of him there. This is the, it's one of the last ones that were that are off there, or are still on their bases. Sorry, I just got that backwards. Throwing down the oxide paste like you do. This time, I might actually throw a touch of super glue in there. And let's slide that in place. oxide paste I have some of these little skull doodads here so let's let's see if we can't get this one in position here I think there's a little bit of sand and or what sand and gravel glue stuck to that because I was wondering why in the world are these things kind of sticky when I throw them into that. Yeah, I was actually I was using that as a little container for sand and gravel glue. Remember I was telling you about the using this as rocks and boulders. Here's a nifty one right there. So now we've got a little boulder. And I'm going to do that again over there. So this is another way to integrate the skulls there without necessarily having to pile up a whole bunch of oxide paste. We just use these all these little pieces of stuff. It, it's right there. It's, it's either throw it away or use it. And I just I just wanted to use it. Why not? So once again, I'm just going to throw a few rocks in place here. I'll get our coarse sand. This is some of the light coarse sand. 
Now you see all this stuff falling, dropping all over the place because this is a very unnatural... <laughs> the, the workspace here is not the way I would have it normally. I've got three lights, the camera, there's a whole bunch of stuff in the way that's normally not in the way. So if you can spread out a little bit more. I've got to cram everything into this area of the screen where you can see it. We got one last to do and we're gonna keep this one as simple as possible here. We're just gonna gather up the last of our oxide paste, throw that down, and I'm just gonna go simple little rocks on this. Which means I can go with a little more wood glue. Now I don't have to worry about integrating a big old piece of that plastic or resin skull stuff. So let's rip out some of this. I just wanted to show you this process a little more because it is kind of neat. And you'll get a handle on how to really break this stuff up when you play with it yourself. So I got a nice, nice piece here. Just going to throw that right there. So now it looks a little bit more like your cave dweller alpha here so we're sort of keeping things look like they belong together sort of by default yeah let's do something like that and if we really have our heart set on skulls still a couple left here so we can throw one right there and drop in another one next to it. Again, there's definitely some of that sand and gravel glue that's hooking onto this thing. And sometimes <laughs> there's usually some choice words and it gets tossed across the room. But instead it's on the base. YouTube probably wouldn't like some of the words that I was going to want to use. Bam, there we go. So the next thing we are going to do is we're going to try and integrate this movement tray. So you notice I've started to pile up these pieces around here with whatever we've got here. We've got cork here. Let's break some of that up. So you've got broken cork pieces we can use. So that's the next thing we're going to do. We're going to position stuff all in our little, well, not so little gaps all around this movement tray. So we'll set that all up and we'll be right back with that segment. Now we've got to work on our rest of our movement tray here. We've got plenty of these little scrap pieces and we got to figure out how we can use those. Can we use those? And I had talked about using this piece right here, but I've got to actually I've got to do something with this piece because it's a couple of things first. It's got a little bit of a lip right here. If I want to use that, I got to get rid of that. I can also try and find a few other pieces like this one right here. see if that works potentially for right in here like that and just put it there see what happens this one sort of works right there now it may take a few rounds of repositioning things here and there to find the best spot for them but what you'll see me do is just kind of position these things first. And some of the larger gaps, now we've got this one here. I already know that I've got to shorten this thing down a bit. Just to make that fit. Right in there. Still got to either smush it down more cut off some pieces or 
change the angle of it. Changing the angle of it seems to do just fine. Okay, there we go. That's good. Let's get in here and see if I can break up some of these skeleton pieces and use something like this. Cut away some of that. There is sort of a rounded, it's not quite a diamond shape, it's sort of a rounded diamond. See how that's going to fit down in there? I can see i got to cut off, sadly, going to have to cut off some of that bone right there to make it fit. Sometimes you just got to do what you got to do. So see that goes right down in there. Now I have to start thinking about rocks and making those integrate together. Well, we've got one right there. Got another rock piece over here. That can just drop right down into here. Got another rock piece over here. That's going to go in there. Partially, it's conserving materials. Partially, it's... I guess it would be a little too much to have that many piles of skulls everywhere. I, I know it's, it's all about the corpse piles and everything else, but sometimes you need to give the eye a little bit of a break. I'm gonna see what happens if I do that. Can I get this positioned over here? Do I want it on the end? Nope, that's a little weird on the end. So I'm gonna try and get that right here. You can see that. You notice I'm just laying those down in place. I'm not, I don't want to glue them down yet because as soon as I do that, now I'm stuck with that. And it is a little bit easier to glue those down with the figures not attached. So here's another chunk that I'm going to go there. And I think you can see what's happening is we're, we're going a little bit skull heavy here on the front. And then as we get back, we have more of the stones and hills and whatever. So again, I got this here. I'm just looking for, looking for something that might fit in one of those trapezoid sized gaps. That didn't quite, uh, there was a certain way I wanted it to break, it just didn't break that way. It's kind of like a morale test, it doesn't go quite the way you wanted it to. Well, I am going to snip away some of this here. See where I can drop it. We'll just uh, go there with it, like so. And we'll just snip this off, drop that in place. Now I've got this right here. which I can probably use over here in a corner. And I'm just going to do something like this. Got myself another little skull piece there. I've got another skull piece over here. Now that I just sort of freed up, I can go back there. And I think the rest of it's mostly going to be cork. Start breaking up some cork here. Let's turn this around so I can get to it a little easier. We're just going to start pulling off some of these top layers. There we go. You can see it's, there's some natural fracture points, like right here, see that? 
that is a good spot to start peeling away now I got myself a nice broad piece that can go boom right down in there like so leaves me with this chunk that may work right here actually nope I'm gonna use it back over here and then the smaller pieces remember we've got we have our oxide paste too so I'm just gonna find a few bits and bobs to throw in over here on some of these corners doesn't have to be super precise I know there's a bunch of you that say, well, what the heck, I don't want to, I don't have that kind of time to screw around with rocks and gravel and skulls and stuff. Then you don't have to, but if you want something that's a little bit more along the lines of, uh, I don't know, something that could get you a best painted army, something like that, well, maybe it is worth it. This piece, this guy right here, where he's touching the front of that tray, he really kind of screwed up some of the plans that I wanted to do there. So I may just have to, I have to go a little more conservative on that part. Here, we'll throw this, throw that right there. And we've still got a couple of these skulls. We could throw some of those in the middle of these little rises like this too. That might be a little too much. So what I'm going to do now is get these guys off the tray. Hopefully not knock the tray over again. It's been a it's been a very long day on top of not a whole bunch of sleep. So it's not the the fingers don't necessarily work quite as easily as they should and like I said normally I don't have my movement tray balanced on top of a couple of these jewelers blocks and this reveals there's all the little pieces here what I'm going to do is throw down a little bit of the oxide paste. So I'm going to go more oxide paste and glue. So what I got to do is actually kind of create a little bit of a clear space for myself here. The, the trick is, and I learned this the hard way, these little thin areas in between, you kind of have to just not put oxide paste there or nothing but a little bit of oxide paste. You go more than that, all of a sudden it starts to interfere with the miniatures that go into the tray itself. I don't worry about covering up that, that arrow there because I can paint a dot here if I need to. It's I use laser pointers and the laser pointers are actually far more effective than trying to take a ruler and line up the edge. I just learned it from other game systems. So that's why I'm, you see I'm just not worried about covering that up whatsoever. Now I will put a few dots of wood glue in here to hold things in place. Just a couple, like so. Move this around. Let's, let's see, what's the one? I think it's the brown earth. Oh my gosh, the wood glue. When you get those two together, it they don't like each other. See, this is, they're fine. They're actually kind of mixing together real well. I learned the hard way that not all of these things play nice with each other is the best phrase I got for that yeah sometimes they like to kind of do their own thing like that 
now I got to make sure I put this guy back in here yeah I thought so Uh, I'm going to actually cut some of this stuff off here. Now the other thing I could do is just use the carving tool and the jeweler's block and slice that down. But see, i got just enough there. That's actually, if you're wondering why I wanted to raise that guy up a little bit, and that's he's actually raised a little bit too. That's sort of the scary bit. Is that he's he's been raised a few millimeters off of that base and it's still touching the front of the movement tray, so that would have happened even if you were just using sand and gravel, whatever. So I think we've got just about all of our stuff in place there. So there's our front row. I'm gonna let that set a little bit before I put some more things in, but. First, I'm taking off these pieces before they go flying. Gotta get back in here with oxide paste. This is not terribly expensive stuff. I think on Amazon, a big old container of this is between 12 and 15 bucks tops. So it's it's not going to break the bank. When you consider how many units one of these containers should let you do a few armies. I guess if you're looking for some kind of actual com comparison there, you should be able to do 20 combat units at least with this stuff, if not more. Once again, Donna wood glue in each zone. I'm gonna move it around like you do. And I'm gonna start putting put my little skull pieces in, in place here. Sometimes just a little burr there that makes it sit there too high. Let's so take that off. That one's going to sit down in here. And it shouldn't be... Yeah, this one I'm going to actually cut away a little bit more. So you can see it. Move that away, and this is what I'm talking about. That's just being stubborn. Bang. Gone. You want to chip away a little more out of that. Let's say we want to chip away that piece. If I move this back, you can see now it. there's no overhang, so it shouldn't interfere with any of the other bases. On this end, I'm already going to start thinking about so just some pieces, chunks of rock there. Now, what I'm going to do is, after all of these have been sort of oxide pasted in place and a little bit of glue, then we'll work back in. And what we can do is, remember, we were going to talk about using some of those skulls. We did it on a couple of the bases where we filled in some gaps with skulls. We'll do that here too. And what I can do is now we gotta let all of this stuff harden and, and dry before we start screwing around with magnets. But I'll give you a little demo on how I do the magnet thing. They're magnets that I got from Amazon. The nice thing about them is they're strong but not too strong. And I've had magnets that were just too darn powerful. They did a couple of things. First, the polarization was a big deal. And they would literally rip the figures off of the off the base. 
because it was just a strong it was too strong of a hold these have a nice balance of strength of holding but also letting your darn miniature go but we'll we'll cover that when it's time just gonna throw these throw these in place see it starts to take a little less time here I've got myself another got a little skull piece right here I guess I'm just gonna throw that right in there look at that it makes a nice we did that before and remember how neat that was it worked out so well just did that again now here's another thing that I need that to actually go in the opposite way so I'm gonna do is shave that down now it doesn't necessarily interfere. All right, we got one last, one last row. One last row to do here. Get out the oxide paste. And I don't know if I've mentioned this yet, probably haven't. Some of these, like the oxide paste, for whatever reason, they have a tendency to stain things. So if you don't want red clothes or a red carpet, I would suggest either not wear those clothes or put some kind of newspapers down to protect your carpet. The other ones, like the sandy paste and the brown earth, those don't do it. Let's just say I've experimented by dropping them frequently and I haven't had to worry about that. Yeah, not quite the experiments you necessarily want to conduct, but sometimes things just happen. Not worried about glue there because the, the cork is pretty absorbent and it'll grab that glue. Alright, so what I'm going to do is dump some of that aside see if we can't find ourselves another nice little piece of cork to go in this corner here like that now we've got to fill in these gap we can do that a couple of ways we can do it with oxide paste like we've done but I also I got more skulls coming so I'm going to use up some of the skulls that are left here just a couple all right so I got some skulls ready to go grab our oxide paste now this one I can't screw around with too much remember we've got that guy with his weapon that just is gonna already touching the movement trace. See what I just did there? I just built that up. Now it's integrated in with my skulls. You want to do it with the with your snow? That's fine. I, to me, I, I think the, at this point the snow is definitely more expensive or the sand, uh, not the sand, the uh, crushed glass and water effects will be more expensive than a little more oxide paste. So we're just starting to integrate all of these all of these pieces like so. Can't have them overhang too much because if they do it's going to be really hard to get those miniatures in there. Like I said, we are going to let all of this stuff have a few hours to dry, and then we'll move on to the magnetization phase, which it doesn't take very long at all. I think I've gotten to the point where I can magnetize a whole tray of figures in just, I don't know, maybe five minutes tops. And you saw they don't go anywhere. I mean, those things, they stay in place. They are not moving around. They're going to stay exactly where I left them. So like, like we've done before, we're building up 
essentially a little mound of the oxide paste to make those skulls sort of merge together. There we are. Speaking of skulls, we've got a few skulls now. Well, we've got the oxide paste built up. I'm going to drop one right there. I think you can see that pretty well. Let's do that again with another skull. What does happen though as you start moving towards the back of the tray you're gonna see it less and less because there was one trap put all these skulls and nifty stuff back there and sure enough you really couldn't see it because well there was a whole bunch of miniatures in the way so I suppose that's another consideration to have when you're doing that is, is think well are the, is anybody actually going to see this I'm just dropping some skulls in here. Maybe one more right here. Poof. There. You know, everywhere else along here, maybe I do the oxide paste, maybe I just do some... Let's just see what happens with some wood glue. See if that's that works out okay because this is going to be mostly more of our rocks and sand so just drop it in using the container I can take a brush and move it around if I want it is sometimes a good idea to do something like that because all of a sudden now I can see on the back side here I've got some work that I'm going to do probably going to do that off camera because eh, it's just sort of a it's more of a detail type thing and it's not really going to not going to show you very much I've got I think I've got some more of those uh, I think I have one more of these I've been using that, like I said, I've been using it for doing the, my neutrals, my Boltons. But I also want to try and maybe make some corpse piles too out of this stuff. So that's another thing too. Uh, do I want to save some of that for making corpse piles? Because hey, you can never have enough, enough of those. So let's see couple of things we can do we can use some of our bigger rocks or I've got all these little chunks like this got, I got chunks all over the place like that I can just drop those in put one in here by the time this stuff, and I know what, what happens is this is not as much of a kaleidoscope as I sometimes get. Alright, now I'm just going to start dropping these on here. I could, like I said, use the tweezers and place them one at a time, but uh, it's just a little more than I really feel like dealing with. And a lot of these extra little rocks and such will just fall away. I actually have a little sort of a bin that those go into. And that becomes more of my general terrain gravel, where it's all different types. This is going to be my last one here. This is the fine sand. Now you know why there's no miniatures on here. I made the mistake because I thought, oh, I better have those miniatures in place when I do this so I can see what's going on. Good, good theory didn't quite play out that way because all of the figures on, they weren't necessarily glued in place but they were sticky and I had to really well again after more words I can't use on YouTube look at that fresh fallen snow not quite now I'm not going to move this around too much 
but we've got all of that pretty well integrated so what I'm gonna do is number these guys up I'm gonna let all this dry and then we're gonna do some some magnetization with these guys right here 10 by 2 millimeter 6 by 2 millimeter so we'll be right back with some magnets next we've let some of our glue and oxide paste have a chance to dry sometimes you miss a few areas sometimes you have to hit it with a second coat maybe with a smaller brush obviously we'll be doing that off camera but you can see that's pretty solid now everything's blended in when you look over the top see we've got our skulls here and it sort of migrates into more of a landscape back here so there's a little difference in height and it all pretty much matches our cave dweller alpha right there next thing we got to do is our magnets so we'll be needing this wood carving tool same one that we used during the basing process but now we're going to need some of these guys and these are those rare earth magnets again these are much cheaper ones that I got off of Amazon I think it's a hundred in a package these are the 10 by twos these are the six by twos six by twos are going to go on the miniatures these are going to go on the movement tray this is that Loctite glue that I was telling you about it's really heavy gel and that's awful important when it comes to this because I've used the other glues even this might even have a tendency to run this stuff is so thick and heavy that it just lets this process go a whole bunch faster so what do I mean by the wood carving tool you see this little number right here this three that's got to go at least this part of it's got to go this bottom section of it has to be scraped away because otherwise that magnet's not going to be level and the two millimeter I mean it's really skating the thickness of the these are much lower profile bases than say a typical 30 millimeter base or GW Malfa whoever makes the base gonna be much lower so you don't just don't have a lot of room to play with there so what we're gonna do is get some of our magnets here we're gonna separate out a few of these it's a little faster if you do it in advance you want to keep them I would say a fair distance apart from each other because they kind of want to attract to each other that's the whole idea of the rare earth magnets so we'll just set out a few here. Let's start with the let's start with the alpha here. And we're gonna try and get this magnet as close to center as possible. So my camera moved a little bit there, sorry about that. Still getting used to this. This is a whole new filming area. Here I'm gonna drop this in right there make sure it's not on the corner of that cool mini logo and then we set these off to the side and we just let these things have a chance to set so this also has to be moved out of the way also want to keep your electronics fair distance away from these so here's and you can see we've got our numbers on the bottom of these it only takes a little dot of glue there so you don't want to go too crazy with your glue and it's how it's not when I set this upside down it's not gonna be running all over the place and that is something that can happen the thinner the glue the more it's gonna run and oh my goodness that some weird things happen like I don't know miniatures being glued to a table which is less helpful because that table is much larger than the movement tray you actually want so we'll just keep throwing our dots down here and it's important to do this first ideally maybe you're doing two or three units at the same time and it gives this part of the process a little more time to set up I just I don't want to have to divide this up into a million different segments here I try to keep it for those of you not familiar with these videos I try to keep each segment at a certain length usually between 30 to 35 minutes tops sometimes they run longer it's just the way it goes than 
I also try to keep these at maybe five chapters. And I think the most chapters I've ever done so far is maybe seven. And uh, just because I think I was doing foliage and other landscape stuff. And with each one of these, now sometimes your numbers, I just, maybe I get careless with where I write them, the number's going to disappear. But really, you could get away with 12, 8, 4. You don't necessarily have to number every single one. It's helpful because, well, these guys sort of die a lot. <laughs> and that means you're going to have to be constantly taking these in and out of the tray. And I just learned from the days of Warhammer fantasy, as in square basing, movement trays, it's best to just, just number those suckers off. Give, give them their numbers it'll be just it's so much easier in the end instead of trying to do a whole sort of a jigsaw puzzle thing and what I do is I think I'll even do a, maybe a video on that but if you look I'll link it I'll link to the blog to this so you can see finished pictures of stuff but I actually have a blog post on how I do the transport of units I haven't done one on these guys yet because it's just so new but my bolt action figures they're all magnetized and I have a sheet of metal on the bottom of each of my plastic bins and obviously there the miniatures just adhere directly to the bin itself with these guys I take my blue tack piece of blue tack here piece of blue tack here sit that down in the in the case and it's good to go it doesn't go anywhere. It goes absolutely nowhere. So it's time for some bigger magnets. And you lay these out the same way that we did with the other ones. These, obviously, they're bigger. They have a little more strength and hold to them. So what am I doing? I'm setting him down. I make sure he's at the angle I want him to be. This is why we had to wait for this stuff to dry. And then I'm just going to do that. Let's me know where that dot of glue has to go. It needs to go right about there, and it's that's the, again the nice thing about that gel. So you can see upside down, the glue's not even dry, and he's not going anywhere. He's he's fine. While I do try and center every single one of these, sometimes they're not quite dead center. And that's why I do this little thing where I just let the magnet tell me where the glue's got to go. A little click. Good to go with the magnet. Put that in there. The trickiest row to do is generally the middle row. It also depends what you're doing. The halberdiers <laughs> for the Lannisters, that was a little tricky because while well, you got these pointy sticks spear wives also a little tricky well spears pointy sticks I think some of some of the other units were a little bit easier like the Night's Watch I think they're the Ranger Hunters but I'll just kind of talk about what other things are coming up so right now obviously there's a whole lot of Lannisters going on with my tutorials but I've also got Starks I've also got well free folk as you can see and if you look on the I've got two Savage Giant tutorials already out there I've got all two of the four wolves and uh, the other two are gonna be on the way also so we're working on everything we got Night's Watch going on I already have one army painting series for the Night's Watch. Again, that's the Army Painting Pledge level. You subscribe to that. It's $15 a month, but it takes you through every single process that I use. Now, see, this is these are the kind of things you got to watch out for with those rare earth magnets. There we go. That's better. 
just make sure that this is actually doing something here. All right, here's our next guy. This can also be tricky, where you've got the cool mini logo. It still holds. I've tested it. Every single one holds. There we go. So I think what happened on that other one, I didn't have the guy perfectly leveled to the base. That's why I like these because they're just they're not super strong. All right, one more of these guys, and then we can get to our last row. These guys are a little bit lower profile, so not quite so difficult. And again, these magnets, I try and spread them out as far as I can, and they still sometimes get attracted to each other. That's kind of the way it goes. I'll drop this over here. Now, some of these I paint in oils. Some get painted in acrylics. Oops, that's my cave dweller. I don't, know, I don't want the uh, alpha out there yet. Drop that on there. There we go. Usually, you can get a get away with a fair amount on these as far as polarity goes. There's other magnets that are way less forgiving as far as polarity. So that's another one where he wasn't quite level to the base when I did my test fit. There we go. And our last one here, we need one more of the big rare earth magnets. Just one more to go here. And like I say, they do wanna they do wanna hang on to each other. One more dot of glue. That's in place. So there we've got our movement tray. Good to go. And what we're going to do is prime this up. And you can check out, and this one's available to everybody. I've got a video about the Badger Airbrush primers. And we've got some over here. It's Steinol Res. And this bottle has a little bit of paint on it. You can see it's well used. But I've got red, brown, kind of a tannish color, a white color. And you can see how I use all of those in concert. Here we've got a couple of them over here. So we use all of these different colors in concert to get sort of a pre-shaded look. And that's what I was showing you before. Like that. You can see there's a little bit of shading going on. It's something we can take advantage of later. So if you want to see the again how a whole unit is painted, I've got a couple of YouTube lives where I was painting this unit. Again, this was in oils, but we'll be doing these in acrylics too because, hey, they're free folk. There's a ton of them. There's plenty of those. You can see we've got some nifty stuff going on in the face. We've got our blood effects here that go down onto the snow. Got plenty of snow and ice tutorials because, hey, winter is coming. That's for sure. So thanks again for watching this. If this is your first time watching and you want to do the like or subscribe, that means you'll get some notifications when I'm, say, painting up these cave dwellers on those YouTube lives. And you hey, feel free to ask questions all you want during those YouTube lives. That's kind of what they're for is so that people can say, hey, can you back up a bit and, and go back to that first thing that you did? Or the second thing, or hey, what's that stuff that you're using there? Could you tell me again? I have, there's no problem doing that. So I appreciate you watching this, and if you want to sign on to the Patreon page, that would be great too. It helps make more of this stuff possible. The more patrons there are, the more videos that I can make. So I appreciate you watching, and I'll catch you on the next video.